When we talk about reprogramming, I think the, the important thing to understand is 99.9% .9 of what we think, what we feel and what we do, although most people think I'm in control, I'm the one doing it, it's really non-conscious patterns that are repeating themselves over and over again. When you and I were born, the only neural networks that we had were for survival. We didn't have any beliefs of, are we good enough? Are we smart enough? We didn't have any experiences to show us that that's a scary situation, that one's not. Snakes are safe, or snakes are dangerous, or spiders. So over the course of the first seven to 10 years of our life, our brain's plasticity switch, our brain's switch that connects all of these neurons and creates the neural map in our brain is being created in the form of millions of connections per second. By the time we're 10 or 12 years old, that switch basically goes goes off and now there's more selective creation of neural patterns based on what we like, what we dislike. We're just an empty, open nest where everything's being formulated. And so what happens is after 10, 12 years old, we're pretty much running on autopilot and we become conditioned or trained to see the world a certain way, to feel certain things, to behave in certain ways. Most of our life we're working on autopilot because the non-conscious processing parts of our brain is working at, you know, 400 billion bits of information per second and trillions of electrical and chemical reactions per second happening without our thinking about it. For adults, you know, 25, 35, 45, 50, we have these patterns that we have to revamp, almost like a remodeling of our own brains. If you think about you know, when you're driving in a, in a town that you know, whether you're, you're, you're at home or in your city that you know, and all of a sudden you see a detour. If you take a detour and then you start driving down that new detour for a day, seven days, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, that detour becomes the new easy road to take. Even though you're used to going a certain way, the brain works the exact same way. So if you've got these patterns that are easy for you, your brain wants to take those patterns that are easy for you. Easy thinking patterns, easy emotional patterns, easy behavioral patterns. Why? Number one, because it's less energy that it, the brain needs to, to use. So law of um, uh, best use of energy in the brain is where it goes first. So the way you retrain your brain using, for example, the 4R process is you recognize my patterns of thought, my patterns of emotion, my patterns of behaviors. And you ask yourself, are these going to help me achieve the goal that I want to achieve? Whatever the goal is. It's just yes or no. If they are, great. If they're not, then what you want to be doing is saying, okay, how do I change that path? How do I change my thinking? I think we play small by default. I think, man, we are capable of so many amazing things and we're constantly living in fear and excuses and reasons why we can't do something. And we, we have it trained in us from a young age, our parents, our family, our friends, our teachers. Think about who did you learn about life from? Probably people who didn't like their own life. You know, who did you learn about careers from? Probably people who did not have a great career, you know? Who, barely are enjoying what they're doing in their work and they're living in scarcity mindset of this is all I can do and that's what we've learned from and you know guidance counselors at school do they love what they're doing I mean I think this is a huge problem and, and we're stuck living small and living scared and living as a result way below our potential of what we could do and who we could help <laughs> I think it's a big problem I think Lack of belief is the world's number one problem. It's what I wake up every day trying to do, trying to help, trying to create. And so how do you how do you get out of it? Well, I think the starting point is being around the people who are living and doing the things that you want to do. Uh, I think the way to 10x your results is not to 10x your effort. Sometimes it is, especially at the very beginning. Sometimes the answer is just do more work. But once you're at your max capacity, you, you, you get to a point where you can't actually 10x your work anymore. It's changing your mindset. It's getting new leverage. It's busting through limiting beliefs because just working harder will not be the answer anymore, right? Is it working harder or working smarter? Well, it's both, right? You have to, working hard is, is your entry to the game. Nobody wins without working hard in anything. You have to work hard. But there's lots of people who work hard, who, who never accomplish their goals, who don't end up succeeding or winning. 
because they're not working smart. So it's, it's, a, it's always a mix of both. And so if you're not working hard, then you don't have a shot. But assume when you are working hard and you want to 10x again, then it's a shift in mindset and a shift in limiting beliefs. So how do you identify the limiting beliefs? How do you figure out where it's holding you back? How do you break through the paradigm and, and hit a new level? A lot of it is un environmental. You know, the, the current thinking that you have was environmental. It's your parents and your family and your guidance counselor and teachers and family, etc that's environmental, you've adopted their beliefs, and unfortunately a lot of them are um, negative limiting beliefs. There's probably some that are, a lot, that are very positive, but a lot of them you've adopted that, that actually don't serve you anymore for what you're capable of and where you want to go, especially what's possible now in, in today's environment. Uh, so the shift is in an, a new environment to start to surround yourself with the people who are like the people who you want to be who believe the thing that you want to believe and whoever's more confident wins. And so if you're around people who are deeply confident that the thing that they're after is possible or they've already gone and accomplished it, if they deeply believe it and you just kind of don't believe it, they'll pull you into the land of belief because they, they are more confident in their belief than you are in the disbelief. And so it's finding the people who are living the life that you want uh, or at least aggressively chasing it down they will motivate you, inspire you to want to go and live your life as well. So, well, how do we do that, right? I mean, it'd be great to be able to hang out with Warren Buffett and Elon Musk and all these people uh, every day, but you know, we can't. So how do you do it? Well, step one, I think, is just through content. It's why I make so many videos on all of my channels. It's why I've stayed consistent over a decade of making content. Why? Because I think when you are around the people, even just visually, even just through a computer screen or a cell phone, it starts to shift your beliefs and your mindset and what you can do. Even for me, I make these videos for myself so that I can be around John Asraf and Warren Buff and Elon Musk and Oprah Winfrey, etc. because they inspire me to want to be bigger. Looking at Elon Musk as an example, um, the news of the day right now as I'm recording this video is he's looking at buying Twitter. and. When somebody asked me yesterday on Instagram, do I think Elon Musk will buy Twitter? I said, no, I don't think he'll buy Twitter, but it's probably not a good idea to underestimate Elon Musk, <laughs> just in general, right? You know, lots of people have underestimated him and he's, he's proven them wrong many, many, many times. And I just like the thinking. You know, one of the things I love about Elon Musk is whenever I watch his stuff, it challenges me to think bigger. Why would Elon Musk, logically, if you're thinking through it, if you if you were running Tesla uh, and SpaceX, would you have thought about buying Twitter? W would that enter the realm of possibility? You know, like this is the difference between small thinking and expansive thinking. Like in his world, it makes sense, and he wants to have a backup plan for the planet. Whenever I think I'm thinking big. Elon Musk is trying to have a backup plan for the entire planet. I realize I'm still thinking way too small. And the point of that is not um, to beat yourself down, like, oh, I'm not as big a thinker as Elon Musk. Right? A lot of people say comparison is a thief of joy, and a lot of people will get off of social media because they're comparing themselves to others. Uh, I, th I think comparison can be a fantastic tool. I think it can be amazing because when you are running with people who only make you feel good about yourself but based off of their smaller accomplishments, then you stay stuck and you stay a big fish in a small pond. I think competition is amazing, but using it in a positive way as opposed to looking at someone like Elon Musk and saying, oh, he's so much smarter than me, he thinks so much bigger than me, I suck, I'm never going to be able to do that. Look at it as a, hey, this is what's possible. There's not that big a gap between you and Elon Musk. It shows that it's possible that you could do it too. If he can do it, then you can do it. He came from South Africa and immigrated to Canada, then immigrated to the United States. He had a father who he calls a monster who beat him. He had his friends bully him and push him downstairs at school. Like he had, he had all sorts of pain and trauma and struggles in his early life. And he, if he can overcome that to get to where he's at, I see it as so can you and I see the comparison as an opportunity that when you see somebody else do something, it makes you feel a lot more confident that you can do it too. And so just use it in a positive way instead of a negative way. So 
whenever I see someone like Elon Musk, it's a challenge to myself and looking at him trying to buy Twitter. It's like, huh, what should I be doing? You know, it's easy to get stuck in the same in the same groove, but the groove can also be a rut in that you're getting slow growth and improving where it could be a lot more expansive. You could be having exponential growth if you change your environment to be around the people who have expansive thinking. Right. So step one is just through content, through through aspirational mentors, what I call them, an Elon Musk, a John Asaraf, a Oprah Winfrey, people who who you may never meet, but you can still learn a heck of a lot from. Step two is to then try to go to some events that change up your environment. Right. If we're a product of our environment, then if you're always stuck in the same habit, the same house, the same routine, the same environment, then it's going to constrict the thinking. Have you ever noticed when you go on vacation, you come up with some great ideas? Why? Well, you've changed your environment. You've been influenced by new things and it leads to more expansive thinking. So it doesn't mean you have to go take a vacation to the beach or something this week, but but what are some changes you can make to your environment? What are some conferences or events you can go to to be around the people who think the way that you want to think, to inject some newness, some creativity, some ideas into you that will have you come back a stronger, bolder, more courageous person because you've broken some of the chains of the rut that you're in, that things that used to make sense, like, yeah, that, that, that makes sense for me to keep doing. All of a sudden you go away, to a vacation, a conference, an event, you come back, it's like, huh, I wanna, you ever gone away and come back and wanted to be a different person, wanted to be working on new projects, new goals, come up with new ideas? I get ideas all the time when I'm traveling. Just think about if you're just constantly stuck. It doesn't mean you have to go travel on vacation. It may mean you take up salsa dancing. It may mean you try a new hobby. Take that idea that you've got and just go go to it. Look at any events that are happening in your city, meetup groups, conferences, clubs that you can join and be a part of to meet new people and take on a new interest. And I promise you, they may not all work out in terms of this is my next career move, but it, it leads somewhere. It's a part of who you are. You take the learnings and the lessons from that and it'll make you a better person, a better entrepreneur, and you'll find a creative way to mix things together. I think of Steve Jobs who started Apple, who dropped out of university because he wasn't enjoying the classes and he dropped in on calligraphy classes, drawing like text and letters for fonts, which made no sense. Like why are you dropping out of this really practical school and material to then sit in on calligraphy. When are you ever gonna use calligraphy? It, ma it made no sense, but he was interested in it. And what ended up happening was when he, when he started the Apple and he created the Macintosh, it had the most fonts. It wasn't just boring computer fonts. There were, there were a bunch of different fonts that he could use uh, that people could then use in their word processing, etc. And it was the most beautiful uh, computer at the time with with unique fonts. Why? Well, because he pulled from his experience in his calligraphy classes. And how he describes it is you can't connect the dots looking forward, only backwards. He didn't know going to the calligraphy class that, you know what, in five years I'm going to start a company and I'm going to have beautiful fonts as a part of it. He was just interested in calligraphy, so he, he went to the class not knowing how it ever working out, but trusting that the dots would at some point align in the future, right? So looking back, it makes sense. Oh, this and this and this all aligned to get me to where I'm at. But he wouldn't have known that unless he dropped out of school and dropped in on the calligraphy class. So it's changing the environment, it's being a part of new things. It's, it's not just staying stuck in the same habits and same routines and, and same thing that you're doing constantly. And that will inject newness that will then allow you to be more creative and create amazing opportunities for your next goals. So step one is to be around aspirational mentors, to be around the people like an Elon Musk, Oprah Winfrey, etc., watching videos, content, interviews, podcasts, books that make you feel better, stronger, more courageous. Step two is to get out of your comfort zone and go to, go to things, physical things, travel more, take take on classes, say yes, go to conferences and events, just so that you expose yourself to new ideas and opportunities and come up with fresher ideas of what you could do with your life. And step three is to to actually have humans in your life who you're around, who make you want to push and do more and be better. And this means, I, hey, if you're hanging out with Elon Musk, amazing, that's awesome. You're probably not doing that, but who can you hang out with who are on the same similar path as you? And that's where I love groups like Mover Makers that I created for thought leaders, 
but you know, it's not movement maker, it's something else, but being around other people who are doing the thing, who believe in, this, in the same thing. If you're, if you're trying to run more, join a running club, you're trying to work out more, join a, join a gym. If you want to be a thought leader, join movement makers. If you're like, join a club or a group where you can feel like you're not doing this alone, where you can talk to people about the journey that you're going on. Will they understand you and not look at look at you like you're some kind of alien, like your family or friends might? Like, what are you talking about? What are you getting into? Right? Join relevant Discord groups. Like, be a part of a community because it's probably the biggest mistake I made early on in my life. I was doing everything all by myself. I had, I had business partners, I guess, but I felt isolated. I felt alone. I didn't have friends. Had nobody to talk to, and I really, really, really struggled. So find other people who are on this journey that you can do it with. Because when you feel like you're doing it with other people and you're not alone, you'll be a lot more productive, a lot more effective, and have a lot more fun as well. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. I started eating organic food several years ago, not 100%, probably about 85%. Um, uh, I became a vegan uh, eight and a half years ago or so, nine years ago, actually in July, it'll be nine years. So I eat um, a plant-based diet. And so uh, why? Uh, easier for digestion for me, um, organic uh, foods that have all the colors, you know, the phyto, phytonutrients, reds, greens, yellows, blues, purples. Um, I want all of the different phytonutrients that are alive. Uh, it, you know, in my opinion and in my research, the more food that we eat that's alive, um, the more nutritionally dense it is for us with the, the vitamins, the minerals uh, that we need, the fiber that we need for elimination, the probiotics that we need, you know, the gut bacteria, the gut microbe um, has been studied for quite some time, but it really in the last four or five years, it's really been an explosion of people talking about your gut microbe, right? Uh, that uh, the, you, you've got obviously your brain, you know, the, uh, I guess the head honcho, uh, but you've got your heart as well and the uh, intelligence of the heart and the brain part of it, but also your gut. And so if you're feeding your uh, gut with prebiotics and probiotics, right? That gives your gut the ability, the uh, trillions of cells in our body and the hundreds of millions uh, of uh, hundreds of billions of gut uh, bacteria uh, gives them the food that they need to do what they do. So are you focusing on your gut health? Setting goals is an intellectual and imagined exercise that your conscious brain, right? I'm gonna show you one of the little brains today from the city here on my desk. Your conscious brain, left prefrontal cortex specifically, where you get to choose. What is it you would love to have your life be like? What is the imagination you know, of the ideal life that you'd like? He says, everybody could do that. He says, but achieving goals happens as a result of having the right beliefs, perceptions, habits, attitudes, at the non-conscious level, where all of the habits reside, part of the hippocampus, part of your brain, that drives your automatic behavior day in and day out is what is gonna determine whether you achieve those goals or not. He says, using willpower to achieve goals is like using gunpowder. It's just a starter using resilience or using your imagination, those are all really good conscious abilities that anybody can use, he says. But if you don't develop the habits at the non-conscious level, which include your self-image for how you see your life, 
you're never going to achieve those goals. When I was um, five, six, seven years old, I moved from Israel to Montreal. I spoke Hebrew, but not English or French. And for two and a half years, I felt dumb. Mm. I felt like I wasn't smart enough and I wasn't good enough. And I was made mm. fun of as a kid. That led to me being involved in street gangs from the age of 12 to 16. Wow. In Montreal. In Montreal. Wow. Uh, we trafficked drugs from Florida. We wow. did break-in entries. We, we had a little street gang, about wow. 12 of us that just got into a lot of trouble. My path was either jail or the morgue, one of the two. And uh, I'll, I'll, there's a lot of successful people that have that kind of a story for some <laughs> strange reason. Um, and at 19, I met a mentor. His name was Alan Brown. He was a real estate developer. Still in Montreal. Uh, no, this was in, I, I moved from Montreal after gotcha. years of turbulence. I finally broke free and moved from Montreal to Toronto, which is about 350 miles. Gotcha. In Canada, and still, Canada, yeah. And um, May 1980, I took uh, my real estate course. June 20th, 1980, became licensed as a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did is I met a man the weekend before that my brother introduced me to who was into personal development. Yeah. And he was into, you know, Zig Ziglar and Dennis Waitley and Brian Tracy's, sure. you know, 35 years yeah. ago. And he introduced me to this world of, of, you know, the mind, introducing me to the world of changing my beliefs, changing my habits, changing my perceptions of first, who are you? And he really helped me see that, you know, the spiritual greatness within everybody, the intelligence that's within everybody. He had me start with getting in touch with that. And um, it was very philosophical and didn't have the evidence that we have today mm. on affirmations, visualization, meditation, right. mindfulness, subliminal programming, uh, habit creation, and all of the different methodologies that we've all heard about, whether it was the astronauts that went to the moon initially that trained their brains or the musicians that have or the uh, athletes that mm. do. The science now is just so phenomenal on what is actually happening. And so as I was building my own companies, I built my companies by training my employees, not on the skills that they needed, but on how spectacular they were as human beings. Mm. And the greatness was within them. And if they trained their brain to have the belief that is, they may not have the skill or the know-how, but if you have the belief that I can, I will, I must. You can build the habit. You, you can, can start build the action. habit. You can yeah. start to, you can, if you think about this, I don't care if you, if we asked any question on health, wealth, relationships, career, business, spirituality, we wanted to find the answer to something. Yeah. We could Google it and within minutes have everything we want Tutorials, to know about. Tutorials, everything we need. Tutorials, needed. videos, audios, how to, step-by-step, -step, <clears throat> blueprint, yeah. color coordinate, whatever you want. <laughs> so our problem isn't how to. Uh -huh. All the how to exists. How to build a business exists. How to be a great lover exists. You know, it all Everything. exists. How to get in shape. Yes. Right. So I wanted to focus on, you know, how do I help more people take more of the action they know they should be and want to? We have this phenomenal brain, right? It's, it's, it's genius abilities. We can't figure out how to re replicate it anywhere with billions of dollars. Uh, but we are getting some of the user's manual now. So when you feel fear, what should you do? I teach the first two inner sizes that I teach every one of our students. Number one is called take six, calm the circuits. So if you have this unpleasant, anxious, fearful emotion, energy in motion, right? And it's unpleasant and the brakes have gone on. If you just take six deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth like you're breathing through a straw. You will deactivate the stress response center, which means blood is gonna go back to the left prefrontal cortex, the Einstein part of the brain can actually think through this problem, because what happens when the stress response center is activated, blood goes away from that into the fear response, so you have epinephrine, cortisol, adrenaline, to be able to get you out of this situation. It's part of our in instinctual brain, part of the reptilian brain. The first part of the brain that was developed was that, then the mammalian brain, the limbic system, then the neocortex, the thinking brain. So when our brain has this signal of, oh my God, you might get hurt, you might lose this, you might get in trouble, you might be embarrassed, ashamed, ridiculed, judged, etc., that part of the brain is going to get activated. So if you take six deep breaths first, calm down, calm the circuits first, then do inner size number two is called AIA, A-I-A. The first day is for awareness. What am I thinking right now? What am I feeling right now? What am I sensing right now? What is my behavior right now? So you 
thoughts, feelings, sensations, awareness of behavior. What's my intention right now? That's the I. Well, my intention is to move forward. I want to do this. Great. What's one very small action step that you can take? Now, the reason you want to take one small action step is one small action step your brain can handle. If it's one small step towards it, the threat response goes away. But if you focus on the end game right away, you're going to get that rush and that instant trigger of the fear response, stress response. So the first thing you want to do is learn how to manage your mindset and what you focus on. Learn how to manage your emotions because they drive your behavior more than anything else because we move away from pain and we move towards pleasure, but we move away from pain a thousand times faster. <laughs> and pain wires in the brain faster for survival mechanisms. So purely from a neuroscience perspective, just understanding self, once you understand, oh, okay, this feeling is normal, okay, what should I do? Take six calm the circuits, aya, and now you can start being progressive and make progress towards what you want. Are you interested in achieving that vision for your life? Are you interested in achieving those goals or are you committed? Are you interested or are you committed? And I didn't know what the difference really was at the time. And so I asked him, Mr. Brown, what's the difference? And he said to me, he says, if you're interested, you'll do what's convenient. If you're interested, you'll use the fact that you didn't like school and you didn't do well in school to control your thinking and your self-esteem. He said, if you're interested, you come up with stories and excuses why you can't achieve those goals and dreams that you shared with me. You come up with stories and excuses as to why you don't want to do the work necessary to grow and to learn what you need to learn. He says, however, if you are committed he says, you will do whatever it takes. You will upgrade your knowledge, you'll upgrade your skills, you'll become who you need to become and you'll learn from whoever you need to learn to be able to achieve those goals and dreams. So, lesson number one is no matter what goal or vision you have, ask yourself that question, okay? Are you interested in achieving that goal and dream? Or are you really, really, really committed and willing to do whatever it takes. In many cases with adults, we have to unlearn what we learned in the past. What we learned in the past. And one of my friends wrote a really good book. He says, what got you here won't get you there. <laughs> so if, <laughs> I you, love that. Yeah, if you want to achieve another result that you've never achieved before. Who is he? Uh, Marshall Goldsmith. Okay, I yeah. see. Yeah. And um, wonderful, wonderful man. And so if we want to achieve another result that we've never achieved before, then we have to become somebody different. We have to upgrade our skills. We have to upgrade our behaviors. We have to um, master our emotions better because we're going to meet resistance. Yes. And we don't like change. The human brain and body doesn't like change. I've said for... 30 years now, the only human being that likes change is a baby with a wet diaper. Yeah. That's the only human being that likes change. Everybody else <laughs> likes, I like everything just the way it is. Yeah. And so, and as we get older, it becomes harder and harder to change because the patterns in the brain are so strong. If you think about an oak tree, Yes. And if you looked underneath the ground yeah. to the root system, it's connected to all the other oak trees, maybe for miles around, all interconnected. So it's hard and to change. It's hard to change it because you can pull the oak tree, but you still have all the roots that are connected. And if you had a little, a little baby tree that's maybe been there for one year, it's much easier to go in yeah. and pull the tree out and take the root system out. And so as we get older, we become more and more conditioned to be more and more the same. So it's not that change isn't possible. It's most people aren't willing to commit to switching from what's comfortable to what's not long enough for the new to be comfortable. 
while you're in the, you know, in the, uh, what am I thinking, feeling, it's a chance to be aware. And the biggest gift we have as human beings is our awareness. Because awareness is what gives you choice. And choice is what gives you freedom. Most people are living their lives in a reactive state, automatic reactive state because of these set points that we talk, start talking about. So we're in this repetitive cycle over and over and over and over. We react to the same things, we behave the same way, we eat the same foods, we dress the same way just to maintain that homeostasis and comfort zones. And we've never been taught. Like when, when were we taught it as kids? Like here are your six core emotions. Here's the way you deactivate you know, your stress center or fear. So here's how you activate your imagination center. Here's how you have more focus. Here's how you develop a new belief. Here's how you develop a new habit. Here's how you release one. We haven't been taught that. We've been told they're important things, but we haven't been given the tools and then we haven't practiced the tools enough to be able to make them part of our unconscious competence brain. We started to retrain our agents' brains after we did a we did a um, an event. Um, Seventy five agents paid. I think it was two or three thousand dollars to go through a six month brain retraining program. Huh. Those seventy five agents increased our sales by a hundred million dollars. Wow! And we said, okay, we're going to teach this to the entire company. <laughs> yeah. So we went from a billion two to four point five billion in oh sales a year in three years by working on this versus wow. what they needed to do. What you'll see is just patterns, patterns and more patterns. The entire universe is made up of patterns that could be explained mathematically for the most part, but we can also just see behaviors. And so there, it's, not, it's not difficult, mm -hmm. but it's, 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 it takes effort to be able to override some of the natural you know, brain's propensity, the brain's desire to keep us away from hurting ourselves. To re-educate our brain. Yeah. Mm. And if you think about, you know, when we have, when we, when we're young, what do our parents do? Oh, be careful. Oh, don't fall down. Oh, watch out how you ride the bicycle. You know, and if you fall down, well, my kids, when, you know, when they were young, I let them fall and I let them do things so that they would get accustomed to get up. I wouldn't go and, 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 and you know, um, baby them yes. they'd fall down it was like great you fell down get back up because they learned that it's okay yeah most kids when they fall down they'll look at an adult to see well is it okay or not is it okay or not and usually the adults are either going to baby them and and overcompensate or they're going to look at them and say come on get up and, and 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 you know do what you need to do think about what is a belief and let's go to, again, I, I just like to go to the neuroscience field because just my passion now, is a belief is nothing more than a group of cells that have been connected and then reinforced. And we have two types of beliefs. We have beliefs that what I- Really fast, I'm gonna stop you there because okay. that's so important okay. yeah. and so different than I would have expected. I think when people hear belief, it is believe in something that is true, which did not enter into your definition. No, we, we believe, whatever we believe is truth for us, but it's not the truth. That's really interesting. Right, but we have been conditioned, uh, if we go back a little bit to um, what we talked about earlier, about you know, when you were a baby, when you were born, what belief did you have? Zero, right. goose egg, zero, not one. And so you learned what to believe and how to even formulate your beliefs, chances are from parents, teachers, brothers, sisters, television, maybe when you read some books, right? And we behave based on what we believe. So we might be behaving our lives away based on false or inaccurate or disempowering beliefs. So if a belief is a neural pattern in the brain, then we probably have some good ones, empowering ones, useful ones, and chances are we have some that are not useful, not empowering, and not worthy of the geniuses that we all are. So the question is, is it possible for me to develop new beliefs that I don't believe right now? Well, the key factors to becoming yes. a loser. Let's imagine that together we build a training to help people. To become a loser. Yeah. Repeatedly thinking feeling and doing the wrong things every day. Okay, great things. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do you have another one? Hanging around 
with the wrong people. Your environment. Networking. Your environment shapes who you are. Okay. Very, very much. When I was getting into trouble as a, as a young man, the people that I was hanging around with were also getting into trouble. When I was a little boy, I remember my, my father, he used to tell me, he says, show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. And so you're going to be the sum of the people that you invest the most amount of time with. Whether it's at home, your friends, your family, or your business people. So if you tend to be around winners, you'll start to, by, by sheer environmental factors, listen and learn how they think. You'll be able to observe what they do. You'll learn the skills that they've acquired. And if you hang around with losers, you'll see patterns. Everything in life is about a pattern. And so people who are unsuccessful and losers, which I don't even like to use the, yeah. the, 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 the term loser, although there are some, not a lot, um, they have got habitual patterns of destruction, self-sabotaging thoughts and self-sabotaging behaviors. And people who are successful, and I don't mean just financially, people yeah. who are successful in their health, their relationships, charitable contributions, they have consistent, successful patterns that are constructive mm. towards being successful. After I you know, got into real estate and I traveled the world, I, um, I ended up buying the franchising rights for Remax mm. for the state of Indiana. And uh, I was 26 years old. Wow. And I bought the franchising rights for Indiana, moved to Indiana. Wow. And um, I remember being interviewed for the Indianapolis Business Journal. And the guy said, what are your goals here in Indiana? 26 years old, I was wearing, you know, uh, I remember a, a brown pinstripe suit. Uh, I had glasses on, even though I didn't need glasses, I just wanted to look older. <laughs> and I said, uh, we'll do a billion dollars in sales in Indiana. And the gentleman said to me, he says, are you um, certain of that? I said, well, that's my goal. He says, well, the two largest companies that have been here for 100 years. Don't do $100 million, 100, uh, or a billion dollars combined. And uh, my cocky young self, I said, well, we'll be the first. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three weeks later, the Indianapolis Business Journal, and I have it at home, it says, sets $1 billion goal. Wow. Um, May 1992, we hit a billion dollars in sales, five years later. One of the things that I was taught playing sports was repetition is the mother of skill. Repetition is the mother of skill, which is... Another lesson that I learned at a very young age. Why does any piano coach, guitar coach, um, um, uh, coach for sports have their students repeat drills over and over and over and over again, whether it's layups or free throws or playing you know, certain chords on the guitar or on the piano? Why is repetition so important? The answer is because when you repeat a pattern over and over and over again, whether it's a language pattern, an emotional pattern, or a behavioral pattern, when you repeat it over and over and over and over again, 20 times, 50 times, 100 times, 200 times, 500 times, 1,000 times, you actually are creating patterns in the brain that initially go from being conscious patterns, patterns that require effort and intention and attention, your conscious mind, to patterns that become non-conscious, that require less energy and less attention because it's been repeated so many times, it becomes second nature. So you have to use intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So you have to start everybody off, well, why is it important for you to be able to develop these new beliefs? Like, what would your life be like if you had them right now? What would your family life be like? You have to give them a benefit that's greater than the switch cost. That's interesting. Right? So the switch cost is something that our brain resists. The only human that likes change is a wet baby. <laughs> <laughs> Every other human being is resistant to it because safety first and homeostasis, and energy conservation. So we are biologically wired not to want to change. So we have to deliberately coax the brain into 
motivational reasons, emotional reasons. You have to have intrinsic reasons. Why must you do this? And so you can use pain as a frame as well. So if you don't, then are you okay with your life being like this at this age in five years and 10 years and 20 years? And if you're okay with that, then you're, you're not a candidate for change. Mm. But if you're committed to letting go of the old so you can create the new, and you create motivations every day, that's where the power is. Remember earlier, progress, not perfection. Mm. So anybody can do one minute or, or 10 seconds. So if you can start to formulate a habit, a daily habit, a weekly habit, it doesn't matter how long it is. If you can create that space in your brain that on this day, at this time, this is what I do, and you do that repeatedly, that becomes a habit. And it takes those 66 days or so for a simple habit that you have to consciously do to then the habit doing you. For the last, you know, 35 years, you know, what I've been doing is I, I've had coaches for skill training. I've had coaches and mentors for mindset training. I've had coaches on brain training. I've had coaches for business skills and training. I've had coaches and mentors and experts for every different area of my life, whether it's health, nutrition, business, money, investing, getting out of debt, making more money, protecting your assets, there are experts for every single area of our lives that already know what you need to do. Uh, a lot of people are stressed right now, why? Text, phone, mobile, radio, TV, Facebook, uh, Twitter, awesome. all, all this, it's just non-stop stress in the brain. And when the brain feels stressed, then obviously cortisol, 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 epinephrine, norepinephrine kick in, and that's a stress hormone. Well, it's like having you know your finger on the electricity button all day long, and you're just not not stopping. So you start mm -hmm. to burn the fibers, um, your nerves. If you're going to be uncomfortable, your reward has to be big. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so if you're going to be making a change, ask yourself why is what I want to achieve so important to me, why am I willing to, to you know, use my new you know, willpower and persistence, and why am I willing to go through the discomfort of change? Why am I willing to you know, listen to the negative talk that I have or the emotion that I have and still do it anyway? And if you don't have a big enough reason the first time you have a chance for an excuse, you'll take it. <laughs> and that's why people, they start on diets, and after a day or a week or two weeks, they're off the diet. Or they say, you know what, I'm not happy in my relationship, and you know, two weeks later, they're back with the same person, or they find another person just like the one that they left. Or people are afraid to leave their jobs um, because they don't like the discomfort of change. Yeah. Well, the only certain thing in the universe, the only constant is change. Yeah, every time, change. Everything that's the only constant in the universe. It's an oxymoron. It's like, how can change be the only constant, the only stable thing? Because everything's changing. So why not acquire the skill to change every time? To be comfortable in change. Mm. And in today's era... To be comfortable with the incomfort. Yes. Yes. Yes, and so I know that the meaning that I give, remember I said you have to reframe things? Yes. The meaning I give things now is when I'm uncomfortable, I'm changing and I'm growing and I go, yeah. <laughs> yes, perfect. It's uncomfortable, but this is what I want. Yeah. Right, and then so we go through these waves of comfort and change, comfort and change, and that's just like the waves of life. Every morning when you wake up, you have, let's say, let's say it's 10 attention units. If you're using two or three or four or five or six of them on why What's an you attention can't, unit? What do you mean? an attention unit is your, uh, your ability to stay focused. Uh -huh. And your ability to stay focused um, is happening at the conscious and non-conscious level. So if you're processing stuff in the back of your mind of something you're angry at, something you're mad at, something that's stressing you out, that you, or mm -hmm. you don't have enough money, or you don't have the right relationships or the contacts, or whatever, if you're stressing out about that stuff and that's eating up your attention units, that's like having your computer, okay, using up most of its energy in what's behind that you're not using. Yeah. And we all have a certain amount of attention units every day.
And so one of the things that uh, you asked me before that I can come back to on the rituals mm -hmm. um, is, is using the attention units in a way that is highly, highly productive versus yeah, wasting a lot of time. And so my ritual, I mean, we started earlier, I just remembered that, um, is sure. you know, wake up, meditation, exercise, uh, plant-based protein smoothie, mm. followed by reviewing my goals. Mm, every day you review every, goals. Every, every day, five minutes. The goals for the day, the month, the every year, year everything. Yeah. I, I review my overarching goals. Wow. I could do that fairly quickly because mm. that's my longer range goals. I could review the emotions that I want because mm. I'm committed to having those emotions every day and feeling a certain way every day. And then I take a look at from, you know, you know five years out, three years, one year, mm -hmm. 90 days, 60 days to today. Wow. And so I just review it, and what happens? Piece of paper, the iPad, laminated, and on laminated. my computer. Really? Yeah, yeah, and I have it in a in a in a booklet also. Really? So when I travel, it's really easy. To, do you have it with you? I, no, no, it's 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 a it's a pretty oh, big. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. It's like a little manual. You have to send me a photo. So yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I'll send you. It's called my exceptional life blueprint. I like it. And um, and so the the question many people may ask is why? Why would you do that? Well, because you're having thirty five to fifty thousand thoughts a day. Right? And your brain isn't certain like what's really important and what's not. Yeah. But if you instruct your brain that something is really important, whether it's something you don't want or something you do, it will actually pay attention to you. Right. So by priming my brain early every day, here is what I want you to focus on. Here are the emotions I want you to express through me. Here's the behaviors that I need to take. Then I am on a daily basis setting the course for what I want my mm. brain to focus on. Mm. I'm cognitively priming the pump. Mm. And if I do it one day, that's great. If I do it 60 days, 100 days, my brain goes, hey, I'm just going to make this automatic because I want to conserve energy. Right. Right? I'm just going to make it automatic. So not only will you focus on it consciously, but I'm just going to make everything happen behind the scenes to help, help you see, think, and feel things that are congruent with what you're trading your life for and what sure, you want to achieve. Sure. So I'm just using the system better. <clears throat> on my, my epitaphs, he lived, he loved, he gave, he had fun. I always thought that if there's a way that I could somehow use my life in a way that I can make somebody else's life a little bit easier to live, either through knowledge or understanding or love or a process, uh, then my life has been worthwhile. And so awesome. I, just want to make, I just want to make a difference. And I've, I'm one of the people that doesn't believe that there's anything wrong in the world. Everything's unfolding exactly as it should. Uh, there are many things not to my taste uh, that I don't understand. But I just want to make the journey as good as I can for as many people as I can. There was actually a very, very big mistake in the movie The Secret. Okay. And in the movie The Secret, the story that was told was that all you have to do is think, believe in your heart, and you'll achieve. It's not true. There's a lot of people who think wonderful, great thoughts. They believe that I deserve this and I can have this. But they don't do one thing and this is what causes their problem. You know what that one thing is? I want to know. <laughs> they don't take consistent action every day. So in the secret, they didn't talk about you have to do the right things in the right order at the right time. And they led a lot of people to believe that all you have to do think about is it. think about it. Well, I've never met a monk in a monastery who's been praying to make money and through the ceiling, a safe falls with a million dollars. Oh. I've never met that yet. <laughs> and, but I have met a lot of people who think and believe and then they learn what they need to learn. They upgrade their knowledge and their skills. They overcome their fears. They overcome their doubts. They overcome their lack of confidence. They overcome their lack of certainty and they take action anyway and then little by little, things start to happen for them. They achieve the results. And we call that the law of Goya. G-O-Y-A. Get off your... <laughs> so law of attraction. But, uh, it's my favorite law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, law of attraction and law of Goya together. That's what works. When it comes to the, you know, the, uh, the problems that come up every day, I mean, it's, it's like weather. Mm -hmm. It's sunny for a little bit. It's raining. It's hailing. It's windy. It's not. That's life. 
and and that goes back to where we started a little bit earlier about the frames yeah. is if you expect things to always be great you're delusional mm -hmm. if you expect things to always be bad that may be it a little might bit happen. <laughs> might happen. Um, and so it's a matter of learning the frames mm -hmm. and how do you frame stuff. So even mm -hmm. when you know I was going through this challenging, challenging times on, on a lot of fronts, um, the frame was still good. We are all creatures of yeah. habit because habits run their, themselves. Their subconscious programs just run themselves. Most people don't take the time to become aware. What are my empowering habits? What are my disempowering habits? And then the next question is, well, how do I release this one? And how do I strengthen this one or create a whole new one? And what we're looking to do is build empowering habits that then run, run their course. When somebody tells me they've done everything, usually they've done everything that they're aware of doing. But there has to be something, um, if we go back to some brain research and some brain um, uh, neuroscience findings, there's a part of the brain that chooses the goal that we want to achieve. And that's in the conscious part of the brain, and that's responsible for about two to four percent of what you see and what you do. Yeah. That's called the explicit mm -hmm. memory system or the declarative part of the brain. I can declare. So I give you an example. I could read a book. Yeah. Um, and 10 minutes later, I could tell you what I've read in the book. I can declare everything that's in the book. I can tell you, you know what, this is a great book. I'm so excited, I'm so motivated, and I'm gonna make a million dollars. But if, <laughs> at the, that. if at the implicit level, at the beneath the conscious mind, at the implicit level, in secret, they say, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I'm smart enough. I don't know if I deserve to make a million dollars. I don't have the right knowledge. I didn't go to college. I'm male, I'm female, I'm too young, I'm too old. If there's a disconnect between the implicit, the part of our brains that's the real you and me, the hidden part of our self-image, if there is a contradiction between my goal and even what I've learned, and what I secretly believe to be true by myself, if there isn't the coherence between the two, the hidden self-image will always win. So one of the most important things is to create what I call is neural coherence or coherence in the brain. And the best way to think about coherence in the brain is imagine if you, know, you go to listen to a band, rock and roll band, jazz band, a classical band, whatever. And every player, okay, or every musician is playing the music, but not in <laughs> harmony. Yeah, new style. <laughs> You're never gonna have a beautiful symphony. So the way our brain works is if we don't have the symphony at the different parts of the brain, we'll do some good things and some good actions, and then we'll do some things that will ta take away from that. And so what we want to have is, is coherence. Get the brain, the, the implicit and the explicit part of the brain, coherence, playing together in harmony, then moves the body into action consistently. Now we have flow. Now we have a way for us to take our ideas and take action consistently to achieve results. An hour a day, to upgrade your mindset and your skill set. One hour a day is all you need to set aside to upgrade your beliefs, your habits, your attitude, your perceptions, your emotional management, and upgrade the skills that you need in order to play at the next level of success. So if you calculate one hour a day is 365 hours in a year, that equals nine 40 hour weeks, nine 40 hour weeks. After one year, you're really good. After two years, you're really, really good. After three, four, five, six years of doing this every day, just upgrading your knowledge and skills with expert information and knowledge and, and strategies and tactics, you are in a whole different place in your life. So invest one hour a day to upgrade your mindset and your skill set so your action set, what you need to do, 
becomes automatic instead of something you have to consciously try to do every day. Because mindset plus skill set plus action set equals your results. You know, I, uh, I've just come through a really challenging time. I was in business with one of my very best friends of 30 years. Mm. And we started a, a company together in 2006 or so. And um, he ended up with severe diabetes mm. and had a stroke and had a heart attack. And it went, you know, everything just went in a handbasket. Lost lots of money, lots of um, employees. We had about 70 plus employees, we let them go, mm. close the company down. I had friends of mine who put $2 million into the oh. deal. I put a couple of million dollars into the deal. And it was, you know, all my intellectual property that I developed over mm. six years was basically held up in a legal lawsuit that I had with one of my shareholders and investors. And it was a very challenging time. Wow. It, was, it was, you know, reputation, IP, start from scratch. Um, assets, assets, relationships, yeah, everything. Yeah, lots. So it was a challenging, very, very challenging time. And uh, fortunately, because of, you know, my meditative practices, mm -hmm. staying, staying aware of what is not buying too much into that i just you know started building a new company mm. over the last uh, four years and i've got you know 30 amazing team members now in wow. uh, our company at neurogym um my relationship with my wife is great my kids mm. are awesome my health has never been better i became vegan about five years ago stopped drinking alcohol seven years ago gave great. up sugar about three weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> let me know how long you keep it up yeah, i made a decision now it's a, a year so the oh, one, year, decision, no one year one year no refined no sugar. sweets yeah, yeah no refined sugar if yeah, it yeah. happens to be if there happens to be honey on right, uh, right, right. you know on something then you know, a little bit's fine right, but right. no refined sugar no cookies no cakes no chocolate bars Oh my gosh. No soft drinks, no, nothing. Well, right now I don't have any cravings whatsoever. Wow. Zero. Wait till the holidays. Zero. You know what? I just came back from Montreal and, oh. and, and I was there for the holidays and oh the dessert gosh. table was about as big as this. And I just said no. no. And a week before, actually four days before that, I was in Las Vegas at Encore at the buffet and I actually took a video of everything that was there. And I said, now what I did beforehand is I pre-committed when I, before I went to Las Vegas, I said, now. When I go to the buffet, here's what I will do. When I go to this restaurant, here's what I will do. So I mm -hmm. pre-committed in advance, played it over in my mind 10, 15, 20 times, put myself in the situation in my mind. And then when I was there, it was, it was no easy, yeah. breezy, because I had done it you 10, 20, it. 30 times. <laughs> so I did that. And so when I went to Montreal, usually I go to Montreal and all goes loose my mother you know is <laughs> always been, every uh, day she's not got... anymore my sister's taken over oh yeah so the uh you know the food that's there and um and the desserts uh, that are there the breakfast there too i love poutine oh yeah yeah so you can get dessert but the desserts for me is was the hardest uh, part but it was like easy breezy i own my feelings and my emotions and my results i own my feelings my emotions and my results I learned how to be responsible, to be able to respond to emotions that are unpleasant, to feelings that are, you know, yucky. I learned that whatever was happening in my world, I had the ability to upgrade my skill so that I can use everything that happens in a way that serves me as opposed to a way that hurts me or moves me back. Any conflicts that you are experiencing is gonna create neural dissonance in your brain. It's just gonna create chaos in your brain. And so if you take it out of your head and you put it on a sheet of paper, you can look at it and now you're one step removed from what's happening in your brain. And so um, the more you can be in coherence, it's the equivalent of being part of a band that's in harmony, that every player is just like, oh man, this just sounds so good. Well, the more you can be in coherence, the more you're gonna be in flow and the more you're gonna take action, the more chaos there is in the brain, neural chaos, whether it's because of emotions, you're lacking something, there's conflict, there's resistance, the more you can get it out into the, uh, in front of you and open and say, well, what's causing this? the easier it is for that Einstein brain to say, okay, well, maybe I could do this, maybe I can do that, but I can also call a friend or a mentor or a coach or I can research it. There's a misconception that business is easy. And I have a lot of clients of mine, for example, that are, that are doctors and lawyers and professionals that have an expertise in a certain area, but nobody's ever taught them about finance, about 
legal, if they're not a yeah. lawyer, about marketing, about sales, management. about technology, about operations, about management. And being an entrepreneur is like solving a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> yes, I see that. Right? So you can have the two by two with two colors. You know, it's easy. If you want a little bit bigger business, that's three by three. There's more combinations and more things that need to be considered. Four by four now has billions of different moves. Just four by four is billions of different possibilities. Wow. When you get to the eight by eight or 16 by 16 Rubik's Cube, there's quintillions of possible moves that you can make. So building a business is all about recognizing patterns and knowing which move to make at the right time. And there's four options that you have. One is do it yourself and try and figure it out. Mm. Two is get help. Three, get it done for you. Or four, don't do it. A lot of people ask me about money all the time. It's one of the things we teach people how to do is grow their businesses and how to make more money. And they say, well, you know, I want to make more money. I said, well, in order to make more money, first you have to believe that you can, right? Then you have to believe you deserve it. Then you have to make sure that you have something that you can earn money with. So it's either going to be your ideas. You want to, you can sell your ideas. You Take can your sell, yeah, like a trainer. Um, you can sell your time. You can sell your products. You can sell your services, which means that you have to have some skill. Or you have to have somebody else who could do it for you. You have to see your skill, right? Well, you have to either see your skill or determine what skills are needed. Okay. And if you don't okay. have it, get somebody else who has it to help you. Mm, and so when, when somebody tells me I want to make more money, I say to them, let's say we have a pen. I don't have a pen here, but if we had a pen yes. and we wanted to make money, we could go and find somebody who wants to buy this pen yeah. right now. And how much is somebody willing to pay for the pen? Well, if the pen is worth a dollar, maybe you can get a dollar for it. But what about finding somebody who needs it because they have to sign a contract that's due in 10 minutes? That person might pay $100 for that pen. Yeah. So our job is to take you know, our skills, our knowledge, our products, our services, our abilities, and to be able to present it to people who need it and want it in exchange for money. Because you made it this far in the video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you're different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want another amazing John Asper video, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe. I'll see you there.